Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. I have not been praising the sun nearly enough this playthrough. I also haven't set up any of our new uh, emotes, so let's do that. So, first off, I apologize because I came here uh, with a specific item in mind to obtain, but it turns out I don't have the item I need in order to get the item I want. But Regardless of that, let's show off this mechanic because I haven't shown it off yet. And let's just show that off because I'm feeling okay. We're going to get this done, you know, however long it takes. But, uh, Snuggly the Crow. I mentioned her, him, I think her. But, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the playthrough that we can trade with them. And we did trade with them once before. But I want to... Oh, God. I want to give a more comprehensive idea, so I have the page up with me. I don't have every single item we can trade, but I'm going to show you a good wealth of the items we can trade, and the ones we can't, I will tell you what they are, and to the best of my knowledge, where you can find them. Um, but yeah, I, I have most of them with me now, I made sure to equip them, so uh, we don't have to worry about that too much. So we'll go over here, Snugglies nest and first thing we're going to drop actually is the cracked no let's drop a sunlight metal because that'll actually give us something yep she doesn't say anything so that's that's your cue if she doesn't say anything then she'll accept the item that you dropped and give you something back so i'm gonna be doing a lot of uh loading out and loading back in i'm gonna try and cut out you what I can of it, but you yeah. Give me warm. Give me soft. So I'm also gonna try and skip that dialogue as best as I can. But you see, for the uh, for the sunlight metal, we get a white titanite chunk. We can also trade a cracked red eye orb, which will get us. Oh god, which will get us a. Uh, two purging stones, actually, so that's pretty nice. Those are pretty hard to come by, so it's nice to have a few on us. If you drop any of the moss clumps, they each have, uh, have rewards for you, so... I think it's actually, they all give you, uh, Twinkling Titanite. But I don't know if there's different amounts you get. The Blood Red are pretty easy to get, so I'd imagine we wouldn't get too many. So, let's see what we get. One Twinkling Titanite. If we drop... Purple moss clump. This is a lot of loading out, loading in, so I apologize. One twinkling titanite, and then if we drop the blooming purple moss clump, we should probably get the same. You. And we actually get two twinkling titanite for the blooming. I want to try this just to make sure. I think you can only get no, one trade no. per item. Not yeah. that one. Enough. Enough. So she tells you there, it's enough. She doesn't want more than one of any type of item, so you can only trade each one once. So you can't get greedy and just use this as an infinite way to get a uh, Twinkling Titanite or anything. Uh, so Egg Vermifuge. Drop that, and that will give us da, 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 a Dragon Scale, I believe. So you see... Dragon skill. If we drop t -t 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 dung pie, you. For the dung pie, we get demon titanite of all things. Funny thing she'll trade for. It seems. It seems really that uh, the the dung pies are highly valued in the world of Lordran. They like their poo poo. Oh wait, sorry. I just passed what we wanted to trade. A prism stone. Prism stone will give you demon titanite. Really? Hold on. Yep. Prism stone gives you demon titanite. That's interesting. Uh, in addition to that, we have rubbish. Rubbish. No, no, not oh, I'm that sorry. one. Enough. Enough. That's actually right. We already traded her a rubbish, so she's not going to take another one. 
Um, you get for rubbish, I think you get Titanite Chunk. Yeah, you get Titanite Chunk. Um, hmm. Well, next we can go on to wearable items. So if we trade in the sack, unfortunately we are giving away some uh, fun headwear here, but it's okay. It's worth showing off just to do it. And we'll always have more sacks in New Game Plus, probably. So for give, the sack, give me, give me you actually get a weapon. This is really cool. I didn't know about this myself, but um, if you recall the weapon that the Asylum Demon wielded, it was the Demon's Great Hammer, and I mentioned that you can get the Demon's Great Hammer by defeating the Asylum Demon before uh, running out of the arena. Um, so we check that out now. We could actually wield that, funny enough. But you see, demon weapon built from the stone arch trees, used by lesser demons at North North Under yeah, North Undead Asylum. Sorry. This hammer is imbued with no special power, but can merrily beat foes to a pulp, providing you have the strength to wield it. So if you see right here, kind of a ridiculous weapon. We can actually wield it okay, at least as it was meant to be wielded. Very, very heavy, very slow. I'm not a huge fan of it, but um, it actually made a return in Dark Souls 2, funny enough, as the same thing, a uh, rare chance for a trade with the equivalents of Snuggly, uh, Dinah, and Tillo, I think. So, so yeah, that's that. Um, next thing on our list that we have to trade is the Xanthus Crown. So let's trade in our Xanthus Crown. Unfortunately, as much as I love the Xanthus crown, how ridiculous it is. In fact, you know what? I'm sorry. Let's let's wear it one more time. I'm just I'm getting very sentimental. Yep. Okay. All right, that's good. Uh, let's trade it now. <laughs> so we'll drop. Quit. I'm a little nervous, because like if I accidentally roll off the cliff, we lose the item that we drop. So, I'm trying to be very careful when I'm maneuvering my fingers around the controller. Okay, so for the Xanthus Crown, we actually get a second Ring of Favor and Protection, which is what we're wearing right now. Actually, this is a good opportunity. Um, I'm kind of sick of wearing the Ring of Favor and Protection. It's helpful, but it's also limiting my ring spaces so yeah if this ring breaks when removed okay don't equip this ring do it it's gone so now we have our ring of favor and protection we just got but i'm sorry i wanted to free up my inventory and uh, that seemed like the best way to do it so taken care of with that um the next thing we want to do is trade one of our weapons the skull lantern technically not even a weapon or a shield but if we drop it we will be getting another ring, actually. This is the one I thought was going to give us the ring that I wanted. It actually gives us a different ring, and this ring is one that was involved with a, uh, a covenant, the Forest Hunter's Covenant. At least I thought you could only get it through that, but it's the Ring of Fog, and if you recall... Um, well, let's read the description for it. Those who befriend Alvina are given this mysterious ring. It resembles a pearl with its robust, pure white fog. This, this ring camouflages its wearer's presence, helping to prevent detection. So if we wield this, we become uh, pretty translucent, and we can be seen through, and helps us blend into the environment. So that's kind of neat. Um, that's actually really nice, because that way... The Forest Hunter Covenant, I think, is one of the only covenants where you can exclusively progress it offline, but you only need to do, like, three invasions... That said, uh, since there's not a lot of invasions that we've even been able to have, not that I've been dwelling on them, but can be difficult to get. So it's nice that you can get that ring through that method. Um, there are some other uh, rewards you can get from the Forest Hunter's Covenant. I don't recall over, or, uh, on the top of my head, but I think the Ring of Fog is the only really significant one. So that's good. Um, now I'm just looking down the list. There's a ring we can trade for maybe not the absolute best reward. Uh, it's actually, actually... I actually put it away, I think. But it is the Ring of the Sun Princess. It only gives you a divine blessing, which, I mean, we can find normally. So I'm not actually going to trade it because I think that the ring is a little more valuable. 
Um, but yeah, if you have... Do I even have one equipped? Well, if you have a Divine Blessing, you can actually find one in Sen's Fortress and various other areas. It just removes all status afflictions and the like, so that's that's what you get for the Ring of the Sun Princess. I'd say just keep the Ring of the Sun Princess. Um, anyways, we do have uh, a few more things. So let's trade a Humanity. Like so. For a Humanity, we get the Ring of Sacrifice. And then for Twin Humanities as well, you can trade them also you get the rare ring of sacrifice i'm just gonna say right now it, it kind of they go along with each other so you okay so that's the rare ring of sacrifice now the last thing i'm going to trade is actually a boss soul the soul of manis so it mentions it's a lukewarm lump of gentle humanity so that kind of fits the description of a uh soft and warm item. So we're going to trade that, and we're going to get a very interesting, actually, uh, abyss magic. So let's see what this gets us. Okay. So for the Soul of Manus, we get Pursuers. And Pursuers is actually an abyss magic you don't really see from any any of the uh, Ulysseal Sorcerers, so... Let's read this. Sorcery of Manus, Father of the Abyss, grant a fleeting will to the dark of humanity, and volley the result. The, the will feels envy, or perhaps love, and despite the inevitable, inevitably trite and tragic ending, the will seeks, sees no alternative and is driven madly towards its target. So that actually kind of fits the behavior of the humanity sprites that we saw in the Abyss. They have this will and this, this drawing towards whatever is near it, you know, the sense of life, and it, it heads towards it, even though it kind of sees this inevitable end, it's envy or perhaps love. So even though they kill you, they, they love you, which is creepy. They're, they're love ghosts. That's what humanity are. So um, that's everything I can actually trade. Um, the remaining ones, I mentioned the Ring of the Sun Princess gives you a divine blessing. We could also trade our Pyromancy Flame, which I didn't bring with us, but I actually have a different purpose for that. There's an NPC we haven't met yet named Quilana, and she is a Master Pyromancer. We can only see her in Blight Town if we either have a plus 10 leveled uh, Pyromancy Flame ourselves, or if somebody invades or is summoned into our world for co-op or PvP uh, with a Pyromancy Flame pl plus 10. So... Them's the breaks. Um, that's the only way I can get her to show up. And the only one that I have direct control over is to spend a lot of souls upgrading this Pyromancy Flame. So we're actually going to talk to Laurentius about that. Um, that said, there are a few other things. The The one ring that I would really like to get is the, uh, the Old Witch's Ring. And we can only get that by obtaining a Sunlight Maggot, which we can only obtain from... Uh, Lost Isolith, so where we're heading right now. Um, this actually kind of fits in line with what I was planning on doing next, because we are going to Lost Isolith anyways. Oh my god. Oh, those multi-hits, god. Scary as hell. I don't know why I'm not wearing any armor. I, I just ended off the last episode naked. Like a fool. So let, let me get re-equipped after I kill all these torchbearers. They're all dead. So let's get our stuff back on. Let's wear the Mask of the Father, because, I mean, it's it's just too much fun. It's my favorite mask. Not not for the reason that a lot of people wear it. It does give you uh, improved equip load, but in general, just the expression on your face. You can't really see because the light here is kind of dramatic, but you just have the derpiest face. It's, it's beautiful. Um, so we'll put that on. Let's wear the Paladin armor, because I'd really like to wear it. And, I don't know, holy trousers. Holy trousers. We've been out too long in the midnight sea. Uh, so while we return to Lord Ren. The other things that we missed. I mentioned the Pyromancy Flame. You get a red Titanite chunk for the Pyromancy Flame. But if you ascend it, uh, I believe you can get it to plus 10, then create an ascended Pyromancy Flame. Maybe only from Quilana. I don't know. 
or maybe you get to plus 15, then it goes up more. I, I don't remember, honestly. But if you train Ascended Pyromancy Flame, you get a Red Titanite Slab, which is used to get the Fire and Chaos uh, imbued weaponry to plus, plus 10 or plus 5, depending on which one you go for, Fire or Chaos. So, that's that. And then, we got the Skull Lantern, got the Soul of Manus. The Soul of Manus uh, can also be used to create the Manus Catalyst, which we saw him using. It's what he casted his, uh, his uh, Abyss Sorceries with. And aside from that, I think, we, uh, I think we did everything. Yeah, I'm looking up and down the list. I don't see anything we missed, so... So that's that. That's everything that we can trade. Now you know the whole deal with Snuggly. So let's... I'm gonna have to either grind for a bunch of souls or I don't know what, but... I'm gonna get as much as I can, upgrade our Pyromancy Flame as close to plus 10 as we can, and then maybe go after, I don't know, maybe the Orlando Knights or something. But uh, this might be... this might be a very in-between episode. Uh, we've had a couple of those, but... This might have to be another one. It's no big deal, but uh, it is necessary to uh, progress. So. Okay. Here we are, just cracked my last available uh, pocket soul. So we've got 93k now. I'm hoping that's somewhere near enough. We might need even more, because it is very expensive to upgrade this thing all at once, but let's do it. Oh, hello there. I'm oh, pleased to see you safe, as always. If you provide the materials, I can teach you pyromancy. All right, so we go to modify equipment, and same way upgrades work, uh, we go to the well, the Pyromancy Flame is the only available thing. But essentially, Laurentius will um, upgrade our Pyromancy Flame, and we just offer him souls, and it kind of just keeps going up 4,000, 5,500, 7,000. You see it gets every few upgrades exponentially larger. But actually, we didn't need nearly as much as I thought we were going to need. So we've got a Pyromancy Flame plus 10 now, and you know what, while we're here, um, we can use pyromancy so we should just oh apparently we've bought or no did we buy all of these i don't think we did so let's just buy all of his pyromancies now let's talk to him see if he has anything new to say Why? tell me about it no Let's not see. yet in any case i apologies my friend forget that i said anything yep Okay, I guess that's all he's gonna say to us. So, we've bought everything from Len R Le Laurentius. Um, we've upgraded our py pyromancy flame to the necessary degree. Goodbye then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go all day. And yeah, so. Help me. Help me. So. We upgraded the Pyromancy Flame. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to head down to Blight Town. So, or actually, I'm going to take the quick way. I'm going to warp to the Daughter of Chaos. And we're going to meet another of the, uh, the daughters of the Witch of Isleth. Or not the daughters, but I guess the Sisters of Chaos. Or I don't know exactly what name they ought to go by, but does Aingi have anything new to say? Oh, hello. What is it that you need? No. Alright, let's let's purchase an egg vermifuge from him, because I might want to have one. Oh, you know what we could also do? We could buy toxic mist. Oh god. Let's do it. Yeah, that's great. So we just bought toxic mist. Oh wait, do you have anything new to say? That's why I wanted to talk to you. Have you heard of Lost Quellana? An inhuman witch who wanders the poison swamp? Only no one has ever seen her, so who really knows? But what if she is another of the Quaylag sisters? Our fair lady would be greatly comforted by her presence. Indeed. So he talks about lost Quilana, and this is who we want to find. Quilana is one of the sisters of Isolith. I'll just call them that. That seems... Have you heard of... Uh, and that's all he's going to tell us, so... 
But he says the fair lady would be comforted by her presence. Since we kind of killed, uh, Quelag, which doesn't set well with the family. Yeah, so. So anyways, we're going to head out now up to Blight Town, and we have th some things to do there. This is the area we're going to be spending a good amount of time in uh, from this point forward. I think uh, as far as level leveling goes, I might focus on attunement so we can attune some more spells. I might even get some pyromancy going in our offhand. I think that might be kind of a neat idea. I'm not going to go super crazy pyromancy, but there are some really nice uh, pyromancies that you can use. And since we're going into an area that's primarily rained over by fire, some things like flash sweat might be helpful for us. And look, there's somebody in the background running. And they're gone. <laughs> see, we see wisps of other players still wandering about, but so far I haven't had any interaction. I'll, I'll have to do more of that. I'll do at least like a highlight episode or two of whatever co-op and whatever invasions I can do, if I can. I'd like to. So, anyways. So we come out. Let me just move my screen a little bit. It's just so dark in this area, it's really difficult to uh, see where you're going from time to time. Alright. So it is actually nice, the Mask of the Father, because even though... Um, the armor we're wearing, Paladin Leroy's armor, it, it's very heavy as as these kinds of sets go, or at least it's on the lighter side of heavy. Um, the the Mask of the Father increases our equip load, so it kind of helps us out there. Come on, guys. Mosquitoes. It's the mosquitoes, man. Can't even, can't even deal with them. Alright, let's try not to piss off this rock thrower, if that is possible. Alright, we managed to do it. And hey, we just uh, tripped over Quilana. So let me use a purple moss clump. Just get that horrible noise out of the way while we're talking to her. Swiganestis, just to be safe. Oh my god, the friggin' mosquitoes are gonna bug me, aren't they? Well, let's talk to her and hope they don't bug us. Hmm. A mere undead. Yet you can see me. Fascinating. I am Quilana of Isolith. I am not often revealed to walkers of flesh. You have a gift. Are you too one who seeks my pyromancy? Like Salomon? Like Salomon, yes. Yes, of course. It should be expected. Very well. You shall be my pupil. But to pursue my pyromancy, you must give something up. Are you prepared to do this? Sure. I think she's just saying we're going to have to pay her if we want to learn her pyromancies. And it seems like the uh, mosquitoes go into a docile state and just kind of wait for you politely up there. I, I never thought about that, but that's that's pretty convenient. That's very uh, thoughtful of From Software to do. So she mentions Solomon, and I was talking, I think, when we were fighting the ceaseless chaos, that he was one. Uh, he was, you know, ac acquainted in some way with the sisters of Isolith. I think Solomon is actually the identity of the ceaseless chaos, or the ceaseless discharge, sorry. And, um, essentially he was corrupted just like them, but perhaps to an even greater degree. So she has some interesting pyromancy, some kind of standard ones. The main thing is they're very expensive. You know, 20,000 for a great fireball, 50, or 30,000 for firestorm. Fire Whip. You got some really interesting spells here, so let's read through them. Uh, we've seen Fire Orb before. We bought that from, uh, what's his name? We bought that from blah blah blah. Laurentius, sorry. I can't believe I forgot his name. But now we have Great Fireball, the ultimate fireball pyromancy. Hurl Giant Fireball. Salomon, the ma master pyromancer, also called the Great Fireball after the spell. Believed pyroman- or also called the Great Fireball after the spell. So I guess that's the name of Solomon. The nickname of him is the Great Fireball. Believed pyromancy was rooted in an adoration of fire. Those who acquire this spell usually agree. So he is a master pyromancer. I don't know if Solomon is the ceaseless discharge, but he very well could be. I, I think that's the idea. Now we have Firestorm, a primal pyromancy taught by Quilana of Isleth, erect fire pillars in vicinity. 
The storm of flame is indiscriminate and incinerates all nearby life, so a very chaotic facet of pyromancy. We have Fire Whip, Primal Pyromancy taught by Quilana of Isleth, sweep foes with Fire Whip. The root pyromancy of combustion, but much more difficult to wield. And then, of course, we have combustion and elementary pyromancy, which is much more simple. Fire Whip kind of snakes out from you. It's not so much a whip as, as you might hope it is, but uh, it, it comes out in these, in these spurts in front of you. I personally prefer combustion just because it comes out a lot faster. Then we have Great Combustion. This one's really good. Very damaging. Comes out quick. Great against people who are holding up their shield a lot, because I think it breaks a lot of... Uh, it goes through with the fire damage. Most shields don't have great fire damage reduction, except for one or two. Well, a few. But, um, yeah, Great Combustion's good. So Pyromancy, which improves upon combustion. Create giant power, or powerful giant flame in hand. I can't talk today. I'm sorry, guys. Great Combustion creates a powerful flame, but many sorcerers mock the simplicity of this spell. And we have Fireballs, just, you know, your normal everyday Fireball. And then Undead Rapport is probably the most interesting of almost any spell in the game. An advanced fi Pyromancy of Quelana of Izalith. Charm Undead and gain temporary allies. That sounds really cool. And it's not really as excellent as you would hope it to be, but it's still pretty damn cool. So the living are lured by flame, and this relationship is part and parcel to the art of pyromancy. Can be used by either gender. So, so that's interesting. <laughs> I would like to buy this at some point. Right now we don't have the souls. But, uh, we'll, we'll be coming back to Quilana, and she'll stick around here. But, uh, that said, she does have some things to tell us about now that we've, uh, looked through her stock. So, and she'll also modify your equipment. Once you get your Pyromancy Flamed plus 15, she'll offer to ascend it to a, uh, well, an ascended Pyromancy Flame. That's all they call it. It's, it's literally called the same thing, Pyromancy Flame, but the icon's different and it's a more powerful version. So that's that. Long ago, I accepted another pupil like yourself. Over 200 years ago, there was a man almost as bungling as you. In your world, he was called Salaman, the Master Pyromancer. The little rascal really made something of himself. Yep, really made something of himself. Pyromancy is the art of invoking and manipulating fire. But remember one thing. Always fear the flame. Lest you be devoured by it and lose yourself. I would hate to see that happen again. So it's happened before, and... I mean, everything's pointing to Salomon and the Ceaseless Discharge are one being and the fact that he lost control of his pyromancies, probably went down to the demon ruins, perhaps to uh, go beyond even what Quilana could teach him, and was devoured by the chaos. I think that's the idea of this. Pyromancy is the art of invoking, but remember always f I would hate yep. to see that happen again. Alright, so that's all she has to say to us for right now. Um, it's a uh, cool little thing. She's voiced by the same voice actor, or, she's the same voice actor who voices the Dark Moon Nidus up in Anorlando, so just cool little connection there. They both are voiced by the same person. I don't remember their name off the top of my head, so I apologize, but... No luck. Hmm. Well, young pupil, you must have patience, but do not keep me waiting much longer. I really, I really like Quilana. She's a cool character, and she's probably the only... Um, sister of Izalith who has remained unaffected and uncorrupted by uh, what happened in Izalith. So I think she's cool. She kind of came out of a very dangerous area and managed to uh, managed to survive and, you know, make her own living. We, we can't even comprehend her or see her until we have a Pyromancy Flame plus 10. So I think there's this idea of she's sort of... Aingi mentioned she's inhuman or maybe, you know, she's just very, I don't know, difficult to acknowledge if you aren't well versed in pyromancy so ah, there you are i was expecting you let us begin but i think she just fulfills this role as a mentor very well pyromancy i, I think she's very interesting no as a character well but so we'll buy stuff from her in the future but for now we're gonna we're gonna skip out on that because we are we're a poor boy i guess we could buy combustion or something but yeah, whatever. Um, 
so I don't think we have too, too much time left in this episode. I'm sorry so little has gotten done, but it's just uh, a lot of in-between stuff, like I, like I said earlier. And uh, it's necessary that we take care of it. But, you know, we've, we've expanded our, our repertoire a little bit. We might be able to use a little bit of pyromancy before all of this is said and done. So, that's cool. Um, something I'd like to talk about is, now that Dark Souls 3 has been announced, and I talked about this earlier, but uh, I'm, I'm not here to talk about concerns about quality or anything like that. Um, it's been pretty well established that they've been working on it alongside Bloodborne, and so they have put at least a fair amount of years of development into it, so I'm not concerned about that anymore. Uh, I know I said that earlier on the Let's Play, back when we were going through Blighttown the first time, that I was a little worried, but... Um, still a little bit worried, but I think I'm mostly at ease, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. What's interesting is... The focus on the old chaos in Dark Souls 2 and hints of what we've seen from the trailer. We see Alsana, who we learn in Dark Souls 2 is essentially a, a uh, daughter of Manus who embodied the fear of Manus. Um, the idea is that Manus reincarnates, and I'm sorry if I'm getting a little spoilery for Dark Souls 2. You might want to tune out for just a, like a minute or so while I'm talking about this. But, um, Manus, essentially, when he dies, he breaks into many small fragments. And those fragments over millennia come back together. And each of them forms a different aspect of Manus. So you have characters Nishandra, Alana, uh, Nidalia, and Alsana. And those are the four daughters that we know of. There might be more, uh... There might be more pieces of Manus who form back together, such as uh, the Dark Lurker is supposedly, possibly from Manus, but it's actually seen that it could also be a being of light in the Abyss. I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, a lot of weird, interesting lore that doesn't quite come to a head in Dark Souls 2, but with Dark Souls 3, uh, they seem to have a very large focus um, on chaos and on what the chaos flame is doing because we learn very very uh conclusively i guess that the old chaos is not dead um we're going to face the bed of chaos and sort of the beginning that kicks off this plot line in dark souls 2 but the bed of chaos the remnants of the first flame that was uh or well i guess a second flame an artificial first flame that was attempted to be created by the witch of Isolith spins out of control, creates all the demons in the demon ruins and lost eyes to with, and turns out to, um, even when we kill it here, kind of remain and in some aspect and grow over time. And it's left and it's neglected and it grows and grows more powerful. And come Dark Souls 2, Alsana looks over the, uh, looks over the, the old chaos and keeps it at bay. But Dark Souls 3, it seems like it's it's coming to a head. And I think that the chaos, the old chaos, is going to be a major aspect in this plotline. Because it is kind of an outside factor. And it's, it's an unnatural part of the world where the first flame and the abyss are sort of at ends with each other. They fight back and forth. But the old chaos coming in is this perversion of the first flame. So, I don't know. I'm talking way too much about this. And, uh... Maybe I'll try and restate what I said here a little better in the next episode, but, um, yeah, that's that. So, <laughs> sorry if this episode is, um, just bumbling around and crazy. I'm gonna end it here because, because it's just been so weird and dialogue heavy and I'm getting way too into it, but, uh, I'll try and do a little better next episode. We're going to get involved with, um the daughter of chaos here although depending on how i want to do this i don't know if we're gonna miss out on dialogue i have to check things up anyways so i'll see you guys in a little while thank you for watching and uh i'll see you next time so take care everybody praise the sun